Hey guys, in this video we're talking about five main boundaries that couples should have with their parents and in-laws. Now, there's probably going to be more boundaries you need to have than this, but these are the five areas I see that cause the most fights when there's not healthy boundaries in these areas. So the first boundary I think every couple should have with their parents and in-laws is don't allow them to control your decisions or your life. You and your spouse should be making the decisions about where you live, how you raise your kids, where you vacation, what you do with your money, with your finances, and so on. Parents and in-laws shouldn't be making these decisions. They shouldn't be trying to put their wishes and desires about these things on you. Now, if you want to ask them for advice, that's great. Uh, but they shouldn't be trying to push their opinion, to push their preferences on you. This is you guys' life. You guys need to be making the decision. And then the second boundary I recommend every couple have is don't allow them to talk negatively about your spouse. You and your spouse are a team. If your parents are being disrespectful towards your spouse, that's disrespect towards you. And that includes your brothers and sisters or uncles and aunts and grandparents as well. You and your spouse are a team. If they're disrespecting your spouse, they're disrespecting you, and that's how you need to treat it. Now, if you don't, not someone that stands up for yourself, doesn't matter. You need to start standing up for your spouse. Don't allow that. That is going to cause a lot of trouble to cause your spouse to feel very betrayed, to feel like you don't have their back. And so make sure you make sure you do not allow this. Set strong boundaries with this. This is really important. Then the third boundary I recommend every couple has, don't allow them to disrespect your rules and preferences for your kids. Now I know there's like kind of like a cultural thing where we think that uh, we, we think that there's grandparent rules, that they can have a license to do whatever they want. I don't think this is healthy. I think this causes a lot of trouble. Anyone that's going to be a part of your kids' lives needs to respect the rules that you have. You are trying to raise decent, responsible adults and people shouldn't be coming in even if it's your parents or in-laws even if it's grandparents they shouldn't be coming in making things harder for you spoiling the kids letting them get away with breaking certain rules giving them too much candy and sweets and things like that telling them oh it's okay grandma grandpa will that will let you do it you know don't tell your dad and mom that's not okay you guys the rules you have for your kids they need to be respected your parents and your in-laws need to support you in helping you raise healthy happy kids not being an enemy and um trying to us uh, um break past these rules and boundaries that you have for your kids. They're supposed to be helping you raise kids. Then the fourth boundary I, I think that every couple should have, don't allow your parents or in-laws to show up to your house without asking. Now, maybe you did this when you were single, it wasn't a big deal, uh, but now you live with someone else. And unless you have talk with them and they don't care, you know, you have a great relationship with your parents or in-laws, if you want to do that, that's fine. I still recommend that you have people ask before showing up to your house, even if it's your parents or in-laws, because that just shows respect for you. It shows respect for your time and for your house. If they just assume that they can show up whenever they want and they don't ask you, that's showing disrespect. And so I think it's really important to, to have that boundary. But most of the time, even if even if you're okay with it, if they show up, most of the time your spouse isn't going to be because it's it's not their family. And the same should go for you two with, with your spouse's family. So it's just best all around if you have that boundary. Just at least they can text you, let you know, check, hey, is it okay if we drop by? We're in the area, what have you. But just showing up unannounced, that causes all types of trouble. And then boundary number five, a, I think this is really important, is have some distance with your family of origin. Now, I'm not saying that you need to cut them out of your life, not have a relationship with them any, anymore. I'm not even saying that you can't be close with them. I'm saying there needs to be some, some separation there. There needs to be some dis distance. It should look different than when you were being raised by them. And even when you were single, there needs to be some distance there. And that's just the way things go. You get older, you get married, you have your own family now. You can still have a good relationship with your parents, but there needs to be some distance and separation. Um, so 
And the reason for this is because your spouse and your kids need to be priority and you need to have plenty of time for that. You also need time for your own friendships, for taking care of yourself, for activities and hobbies, for exercise and things like that, to work on yourself, grow yourself and manage your soul, manage your emotions. And also if you try and do all these things and also be really, really close with your parents, you're going to get burned out. And whenever, whenever I've seen a spouse that's really super close with their family, not only does this lead to codependency, but it usually leads to, to this person, to this spouse, forsaking and neglecting some area of their life. And it's just, and it's not healthy. And it's usually the area they neglect, it's usually their spouse. Sometimes it's their kids, but usually it's their spouse that gets neglected. That's just the way it goes. And you just, I don't think it's possible to be super close with your family of origin if you're married. You can be close with them, but there, there needs to be some distance there now that you're married. So you have plenty of time to prioritize your, your spouse and your kids and also go to work and also have friends and also a volunteer at your church and or, or where, wherever it is, wherever it is you, if you have a, um, a, a, a some kind of spiritual religious background uh, or if you use volunteer in the community. Uh, so you have time to go to the gym. So you have time for sports and hobbies and activities and your kids sports and hobbies, hobbies and activities. There's so much that goes on in life. So whenever I see, again, you don't, it doesn't mean you need to cut your family off. Doesn't mean you can't be close with them. It's just whenever I see a, a adult child that is married, that's super close with their parents or their family of origin, it's usually unhealthy and something in their life suffers. So it's good to have that distance. If you guys need help having boundaries with parents or in-laws, or you're dealing with toxic parents or in-laws, I have some great courses for you in the link in my bio. Check those out. Otherwise, please subscribe. Consider liking, sharing this video if you know someone that could use this help. Thanks and have a great day.